Welcome to another episode of the 72 Pink Connector. With us this week, we have Josh. Hello. And Adam. Good evening. Tom is currently in chat. However, he, he is not with us this week. He did. <laughs> he, he did. I say you, he no, did. Uh, <laughs> no. Hopefully, hopefully not. Hopefully not. Well, as of right now, we know he's not. At least we can 100% confirm I, as of right now he is not. We can't verify that that's actually him on his own Twitch account. That, that is a really anybody. good point. That's true. His wife, pro- be any, his wife any. probably offed him already for the insurance money. She figuring the trip mm-hmm. was a good time to do it. Yeah. Mm, might as that's well. a good call. Good, as, good a time as any. Yeah. Fantastic time to do it. <laughs> so what you fellas been up to this week outside of killing tom by his wife (laughs) um not much just kind of getting through it pretty much just that (laughs) yeah hey it's 2018 guys oh what since when since 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 the first oh like yeah six (laughs) days days ago six yeah something like that it's been pretty good so far did you guys do anything uh fun and exciting for new year's um, I visited some friends. Oh, nice. Friends I hadn't yes. seen in a while. So that's that was awesome. Nice. We met up with um, some friends as well, and I was sick for the remainder of the vacation. <laughs> so, oh. Yeah, pretty much all the way through to most of last week, I was sick. And now I'm not. This is good. Things are going nice. great. <laughs> yeah, I felt like an old man. I was asleep at midnight. So nice. that, that was, that was bad. Oh, well, I guess Her, I shouldn't say bad. Party's but. hard. He's just, he's a rager. You know how it is. Yeah, I party so out. hard. <laughs> nah, a few years ago, I would have been the guy having a house party with all sorts of alcohol around. This year was just falling asleep on a couch watching, um, Big Mouth, that new, uh, Netflix series. Big Mouth? Nice. Big Mouth. Yeah. It's their uh, big mouth. It's an animated. Um, it's an animated cartoon series. They're trying to be super edgy or edgy about it. It's it's okay. <laughs> <The> super edgy. <laughs> super. That's a different. That's totally different. Whoops. How do you yeah. always manage just like just? It's mess what up I the do words to make it sound perfect. It's, <laughs> it's what. I, well, this is you're, most, you're masterful at no, that. Like <laughs> so, before you think I'm not going pervy. Um, this is a show about teenagers and their hormones starting to kick in. So they oh, have great. these two things called hormone monsters, and the guys is always trying to get, yeah, it's always about sex, constantly about sex wow. and stuff. So wow. it's, All right. some of it's okay. Actually, there was one spot that made me laugh out loud, but some of it's just bad. Oh, mm-hmm. wow. I spent, uh, since I was sick, I was watching a whole bunch of shows too, really just Daredevil. It's really good. Daredevil. Yeah. You should nice. absolutely watch that. I've watched a couple. Is that the one with the uh, blind guy? <laughs> yeah, that's the one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's it. You got yeah, it. You got it. You nailed it. The blind dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was way better than I thought it was. I started with, like, as far as Marvel is concerned, I started with, like, the Iron Fist. Yeah. Wasn't that great. So that's Daredevil awesome. is better than the whatever 2000-something Ben Affleck movie? Yeah, yeah, it's much better. <laughs> okay, good, because it's really awesome. That though. wasn't a very good movie. Yeah, a lot of people said that they hated the Daredevil comics, but absolutely loved the uh, the um, Netflix show. Yeah, Marvel's but, been kind of killing it when it comes to these series. Yeah, well, um, we yeah. got to watch them now before they go away. Netflix is pretty cool about original stuff. I've been watching uh, a few episodes of Black Mirror. Which I've heard so many good things about, and it's really good. It's incredibly interesting. It's really compelling, but God damn, it's dark. Yeah. Like every time I watch one, I'm just like sitting there, like, oh God, I need a hug or something. There there (laughs) is parts. It's it's draining. It's mentally and emotionally draining to watch some of those episodes. Oh wow! Is this supposed to be like X Files? Like that's that's what I was. Uh, It was described to me like X Files. No, it's more like. I don't want to compare it to the Twilight Zone, but it's more similar to the Twilight Zone than X Files. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. I can see. Um, that. It's like e- each episode is a standalone story. It generally involves some kind of like technology or the you know some sometime in the near future, and 
problems that arise within those alternate universes or whatever. Oh, okay. It's nice. pretty much dope. universes where tech has taken over or tech has advanced to where people think it should be. And they're kind mm -hmm. of showing some of the downsides to that. Oh, cool. And some of these yeah. things make me have like massive like anxiety watching it. It's like, oh my mm -hmm. fucking mm -hmm. God. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I kind I of compare that to like some some video games where that are good they're great games but they're not actually fun to play at all oh, this okay. is like that like it's not enjoyable to watch black mirror but it's interesting and compelling and it's really good so yeah it, it gives me a similar feeling <laughs> that some horror games do yeah oh okay <laughs> yeah it's it's a really good watch if you haven't watched it Mm -hmm. I'm I'm only <laughs> through season two. I still have to finish those up. Yeah, I watched <laughs> the first three. Well, I watched the first episode a long time ago, and then I watched episode two and three of the first season uh, yesterday. And then today I watched the first, I think, two episodes of the second season, and that's as far as I've gotten so far. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah dude. I'm looking forward to grinding through some of those. Yeah. Sometimes it's just like I never get the time to do it. But since yeah. I was on a couch yeah. for a week, I, mean, if, yeah. <laughs> I was able I mean, to pull it off. <laughs> if you're just sitting there one day and you're having a good day and you're in a great mood and you want to ruin that, <laughs> go ahead and watch, a, watch an episode or two of Black Mirror. I was actually going to say, today. <laughs> if you're in a good mood, don't watch that show. What you do is you wait for a, like a third day in a row where it's been raining. You're just fucking depressed. And then you watch the show. Then everything gets worse. Yes, you know, but show you like, and then it gets a little better. It, you Sounds don't good. ruin a good day at least that way. Okay, I can see that. You're shitting on a rainy day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm for it. Uh, but yeah, that's that's good stuff. Anyway, <laughs> fellas, you been doing any games, fellas? <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting I for that. Played, I haven't played a single video game since the last podcast. Actually, wow. before we talk well, about what we've oh, been wait, no, playing, no, no, we did we did have a postcast last week, which oh, was yeah, we did. Uh, <laughs> it was interesting. So, so this was a call out from the community that we played yeah. this. Uh, what, was um, it, what was it even called? Moon Base, Moon Base Alpha. Alpha. Yeah, Moon Base <laughs> Alpha. That was the only game I played. It's right after the podcast the entire week. Um, Moon Base <laughs> it Alpha ruined you. It ruined you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. No, I've just been doing other things for sure. Um, but no, Moonbase Alpha was a terrible game. But we had a lot of fun the time that we played it. I don't understand. It's like um, what was that other game? Uh, Viscera Cleanup Detail. Like it's, it's oh, not yeah. a good game. It's not really fun. No, but when right, you get right. a group together and to play it, it is fun. Right. It's about the uh, social aspect, not the... Uh, yeah, yeah, very much so. Sense. So, it's basically everybody is an astronaut on the moon. And I guess there's a part of the game that's like actual gameplay where you're supposed to like use tools and stuff and fix the base and survive or something. Uh, none of which we actually did at all. <laughs> like, not even a little bit. I did a little. Well, yeah. You grabbed a wrench, <laughs> but mainly the the whole thing with this is that there is an in game text to speech engine. Oh God, yes. And as you can imagine, with any mature adults like ourselves, <laughs> that devolved very quickly, <laughs> and we actually broke the text to speech engine a couple of times. You broke it. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. It is Bivens inputted a command that completely slaughtered the text-to-speech engine. We all had to close the game and restart the game so that it would work again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so crap. it didn't affect the server we were running on. It actually affected everyone's ho or everyone's actual PC. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's like amazing. we quit. We quit out of the uh, session and got back into a new one, and it still wasn't working. It was wow. crazy. Overload. Well, the, the thing is, you can type in words, obviously, and then there are also commands you can type in mm -hmm. with some sort of whatever code or whatever. 
and uh our our good buddy Bivens was on some website that had a bunch of things listed that you can paste into the chat and it would do cool things. Like one of them was um it would sing the song of like Electric Avenue or something. Oh really? <laughs> or like what was yeah. the other one? I don't know the name of the song, but it's that really obnoxious oh, that, lady. Uh, What's going mouth. on? Smash oh, mouth. Smash Mouth too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in and it would actually pitch the voice to the the melody of the song. Oh, really? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Through code, you could adjust the pitch and the length of what you typed, mm -hmm. so you could actually make it the text to talk sing. Oh, so wow! That's it was so really cool. cool. And then it went crazy and died. But just <laughs> so everyone knows, unless you want to fuck around with a voice to text or a text to voice engine, the game's really bad. Mm really really bad <laughs> so don't but do if yes. you have a bunch of immature friends like we do and you want to have a very silly <laughs> hour or so messing with text-to-speech on the moon with really crappy physics and buggy gameplay <laughs> yeah yeah sure and that, yeah that always sounds like know. fun it's like, like i want to recommend it but then i don't yeah i, I wouldn't i don't know i totally don't i don't know yeah. <laughs> so, Adam, before we get into what we've been playing, yes, I think you actually have some uh, interesting news, game wise, or kind of news, upcoming date, kind of news, however you want to word it. <laughs> yeah. Um, the game I've been working on, the game I've been doing uh, sound and music for, releases next Friday, the 12th. And what is that game so, called? That game is called Cosmonaut. And you say that game Steam. is called Cosmonaut? Cosmonaut. Josh, you hear that? It's called it's on, Cosmonaut. I heard it. I heard Cosmonaut. it. I heard it's, it. On, it's on Steam. Like, the page <laughs> is live. You can go there and everything. Uh, yeah. We got a... Somebody reviewed it. We gave out some review copies, and somebody actually gave it, like, a good review, which was crazy. Like, that was so surreal to read that. It was, like, some dude I don't know like wrote an article on the game and it's like hey all this stuff is cool and i was like oh wow that was neat. <laughs> we didn't tell him to say any of that yeah. <laughs> that's awesome and for yeah, those of you good. who want to see the game we are planning on uh streaming this game um hopefully on friday or something i'm planning on streaming it and if any luck would have it we would have adam in the stream actually explaining some things while we stream it Sure. Get kind of a cool surreal behind the scene thing going on. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I would be happy to do so. Like when I hear something like, oh, that sounds cool. Adam could say, that fucking sucked. It took 10 hours of scratching carpet with a drumstick to get that noise. Yes, that's my <laughs> food processor pitched down 24 semitones. <laughs> that was me holding a Ziploc bag full of water and punching it, <laughs> which is something I actually did. To get like a splat That's sound amazing. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, sound actually like sound effects. What was the strangest thing you did to get a sound effect in this game? I think that was it. I think it was <laughs> punching a Ziploc bag full of water. And it just, I was, I don't know how I thought to do that. I was just like trying to figure out a way to do this specific sound. I think it was something like, uh, like the sound when you shoot like a fleshy alien creature thing with a gun mm. or with this laser gun or whatever. And um, I needed something that sounded like it had an impact, but it also needed to sound like kind of gross. Mm. Okay. But, so I just like filled a Ziploc bag full of water and I held it like up right in front of the microphone and I like punched it a few times and I listened back and I'm like, wow. That's that's not bad. So I blended that in with some other sounds I had and it actually it worked out really well. That's cool. That's really cool. So I love that about the whole sound design thing is when you I've seen something like with Cloudy and a Chance of Meatballs. Sounds really weird, I know. But um when it I was like raining meatballs or whatever, they showed a scene of the people doing the actual noise mm -hmm. or the sound design. And what they were doing were taking these towels, soaking them in water, and slapping them onto a wood floor <laughs> to get this <laughs> weird, weird splat sound. Nice. That's awesome. Oh yeah, I did that too. I did that in my bathtub. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. Uh, I was, yeah, I was kind of scared too because I didn't want to get like water in the microphone. <laughs> and I also, 
there was a part where I I recorded the sound of my gas stove turning on, like the fire. And I was like really nervously like, I got to get it close enough to pick it up, but I absolutely cannot get too close to that. <laughs> <laughs> In other words, you get a cool sounding plastic melt effect. Yeah. No, that would not. Be yeah, it. there you go. <laughs> that, would, that would make that would make me very sad. <laughs> But, but uh, yes. Josh actually helped us with the game too. He did some animation stuff for us. I did. I did a few little things here and there. That's I awesome. Hope, hopefully, uh, some of it, it worked came out very through. well. Absolutely. <laughs> so I'm excited. I've been out of it. I just kind of did the, some preliminary stuff. Yeah. Preliminary animation yeah. for it. Yeah. And then uh, it just made it a little bit easier for um, for uh, the other guy, uh, Maldini, if, to work on uh, uh, to have the other guy, the other animator, or the but the guy that the was doing all the, guy, he did all the art, yeah. he did all the art assets, yeah. Yeah, he so I just did a bunch of stick figures and animated them, moved them around, and then the other guy went over all my animations and did uh, made them look pretty. Did the art for <laughs> yeah, it worked out really well. That that helped us out a lot, definitely. You're in the credits yeah. and everything. Oh, I'm in the credits. Oh yeah. my god, look at that. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> but yeah, that's really exciting, and actually really looking forward to play that because I remember playing a very yeah. early build. And there was a really yes. cool like effect with the gravity switch that I thought was kind of cool. Yeah, that's like yeah. the main kind of gimmick of the game. I, like I don't want to say gimmick, but mechanic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A gimmick doesn't always mean bad. It just means that is like the thing of the game. Yeah, right. right. It's the the focus or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, super exciting. I'm I'm so glad it's finally done. Yeah. <laughs> Excited to get my hands on it. But Josh. Yes. What have you been playing this week? I know not much, but what is it? Uh, I played a couple things, just the normal, you know, the normal stuff. Um, been really getting into GTA. It's been super fun. Everyone's kind of picked it up again, so it's been nice to go through, like, especially some of the heists that I've ne that I haven't gone through before, because I it's really hard to get people together to just like grind out heists. <laughs> but um, it's pretty fun. We've uh, we've been just doing a bunch of that um still been going through mario uh pretty slow going <laughs> it's it's really good but i'm just not not there yet i'm not too deep into it it's a good casual just, game it really is i got through like the the city area which was which was pretty cool it was a cool little area um and now i'm on the some beach area which is pretty cool but that's how i could describe a lot of these areas i mean they're cool but they're just like a beach area, a uh, city area. Uh, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so it's pretty fun so far. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Um, one thing I did get to jump into a little bit uh, with um, with Tom, his wife, and my wife is we jumped in and did some uh, Divinity. And that was really good. It felt a lot like, um, like a Boulder's Gate game. It felt like a Path of Exile, but it's it really did feel more like a Boulder's Gate if I had to pick anything. Mm -hmm. I was actually um, going to yeah. ask you because I know you have a history of you've played Boulder's Gate. So I was going to yeah, ask yeah. you with that background what you thought. It was good. It felt like Boulder's Gate. It felt like a nicer, prettier Boulder's Gate. That's awesome. Good. Cool. Yeah. How, was, um, he was talking about how the multiplayer was really easy to get other people to jump in like it was seamless. Like you didn't have to start the game together. You could just kind of hop in and out wherever. Did that yeah, work pretty smoothly? It's exactly like Boulder's Gate. So it's not like you would expect. It's not like, oh, I have a character and I'm going to dive in and you have a character and you're going to dive in with your character and that's how we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. No, it's nothing like that. It's it's like Boulder's Gate <laughs> where you're playing through a single player story mode and then your buddy can take control of one of the guys if they want. Like, oh, you want to play Path with me? Uh, I'm I'm in the middle of a campaign right now. Why don't you dive in and take control of a character? So you and then you make your own character. You, you get to make your you can make your own character and like if you start the game. Like we okay. all started okay. the game together, so we're able to. Um, we all made a character, and it looks like there was characters that we could pick up all along the way. But we had a full party, so we just killed them all. Uh, <laughs> it was, you monsters! It's pretty good. It's pretty good so far. Yeah, that isn't that's not coming from you, Eric, <laughs> Mr. Grandpa Killer. <laughs> hey, that, that grandpa is an asshole. <laughs> but um, can you push some but, lady down the stairs in this war of mine or something? Down, down a no, ladder, no, 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 no. She ladder. fell. I didn't she touch fell. her. She fell. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sure. That's what that's what we'll tell the police. She slipped. 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's really good. Again, it, it feels like Baldur's Gate, so it's slow going. Uh, the strategy's there. Um, it's good. It's it's really good. It it just seems like an undertaking. It's it seems really daunting to yeah. to take on. Like right out of the gate, I'm like, you know, we're just in a dialogue string, and we're talking about one person about one situation that's about to unfold. And I'm sitting there reading through, and it's all voice acted too so far. Like a lot of it's voice acted, so it's like it's really nice, and it's just going and going and going. You're like, okay, this is gonna be a long ass game. <laughs> so um boulders gate when it was voice acted it was weird because the voice actors said one line and then it was actually quite often not at all what the dialogue was yeah so I mean, does that yeah. happen here or do they actually say what the dialogue is they say what the dialogue is so it, it's it's good like it, it, it's really good it feels fairly well done you know uh but again we just got on a boat and our boat burnt and now we're in like the first little beach area and it's cool it's really it's really hard it's it's not like a really easy game which is fantastic like you actually have to make sure that you know you don't just like blaze into a a room full of bad guys you know like you actually have to deal with everything but um it's it's good that's all i could say right now i'm not i feel like the hardest thing about it is it's hard to give it a review or or talk about my impressions of it until I'm like 200 hours in. Yeah, <laughs> you know? it, it's that that's type of game. That's what it feels like. That's what it feels like. It feels See, like there's so much. And that's part of the thing. It's actually kind of a turnoff in a way. Mm-hmm. Like, it feels like there's so much that's going to happen. Like, there's so, like, it's when you start like a big series. Like, if you start a big, like, series has been established like if you had to start game of thrones like right now you know yeah. you're like yeah like all right am i ready to like commit to like i know i'm gonna like it and i know i'm gonna but i'm gonna sink like 400 500 hours into just like the content <laughs> <laughs> like, jesus christ yeah 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 so that's, uh, so that's precisely why i don't get into rpgs right exactly because it's just too much well and this is like the rpg of rpg styles yeah. this is like the yeah, very exactly. old school very super dense opposed to like the boulders gate dark alliance where it's just hack and slash pick up some shit and do some stuff yeah champions of norath yeah i played yeah. the shit out of that game i love that game i wonder if there's something that a game designer can do to make it not feel like you're about to take on something epic but then again like an adventure uh, rpg like this it has to be right but like like living in the moment is really hard in a game like mm-hmm. i always i all it's always in the back of my my mind that like i'm going to have to get to there right it's really hard to live in the moment like i think that's what like a mario game is really good at it's good at like saying like this is the world that you're experiencing right now enjoy it mm-hmm. um sometimes when you when you get inundated with like a lot of content sometimes you get worried that like you know it feels overwhelming and that's what like i think black Mm -hmm. desert suffered from like black desert was a really cool mmo with a lot of really cool mechanics but like it just like just right right as soon as your feet hit the ground there's like here's a bunch of shit (laughs) and (laughs) and it's just like so much it's so much that it makes you just want to turn it off uninstall and don't worry about it well, I I don't have the uninstall effect, but I do have what you were saying about not enjoying where you're at. Like I've noticed it with boulders and other things like that, where I have an epic mission, an overall arcing mission, and when I start right. to get close to that, and I feel, or I feel like I'm getting close to that, if I encounter things, I'll start avoiding encounters, cheesing encounters, getting through them as quick as possible, clicking through, talking, just to hurry up and get to that end mission because I think I'm close. And I'll right. actually ignore everything else on the way because I think I'm actually where I need to be. And then I get pissed off to find out I'm halfway and I actually blew through a lot of content I should have paid attention to. <laughs> right. The one the one thing the one game that I felt did a really good job that's a lot like this is um is uh what is it? Origins. What is it the hell? Dragon Age. Dragon Age, thank you. I think Dragon Age did a really good job with it, in my opinion, because a lot of the stuff like pulled you back in constantly pulled you back into right now um like you know there's little conversations that people are having like 
that's a unique little gem of right now. You know, it's rewarding just to be in that moment because you're <clears throat> you're experiencing that conversation. The battles have like a chance of doing some kind of really epic finisher, and it's great. It's like a reward for you being in that moment and experiencing that moment. Um, like you know, the story there's like a lot of little bite sized storylines built within, and you don't get the full reveal of what you're trying to do until you get like a good ways in. So. Like you're never looking for that end of the game. You're really looking for what's happening right now. <clears throat> so I, had I don't that know. Problem, I had that problem with The Witcher 2 where they, right. there was too much stuff happening right now. And it right. was overwhelming. I, see and I didn't like it was I didn't know which parts were really important or not. And then right. there was just so much stuff. <laughs> yeah exactly. just just so stuff. much stuff just it just an overwhelming amount of things that i could be doing or could not be doing and not only just the stuff i could be doing but the stuff i could be reading like the whole backstory from the previous game and all these multiple multiple interweaving stories and characters and there's choices within the dialogue that's like, yeah. just so much there, there's a thing that there's a mod you can download for um, Skyrim that's really interesting. And what it does is it disables fast travel. It gets rid of your quest logbook. It gets rid of your map. Everything goes away. And so all, so <clears throat> the only thing you have is your memory, like God, your damn. actual memory. <laughs> so and you're and you have to walk to all these places and you're going through each thing and you have to like experience like that second. You see, that's right, so, fine when you digest a game at once. I'm getting fucked yeah. with Nier right now because I haven't picked it up in like four or five months. And I'm yeah, like, what the that's... fuck was I doing? And there's no real help. I'm like, I'm nine hours yep. in. I don't want to restart because I have to beat this game four fucking times to get everything. Fuck, yeah. help me out here. So, yeah. <laughs> how, are you, uh, how are you liking Nier, by the way? I mean, my impressions are still pretty much the same. It's, it's fun. It's a shooter mixed with slasher. The perspective changes are fucking phenomenal. Um, but it's not forgiving if you forget what you were doing mm. it's uh, it does have some cool indicators on the map but i mean i don't remember what i was doing in the missions just like oh hey you're supposed to find two people in a desert <laughs> oh, it's like, okay. oh okay what really okay so i just wander around aimlessly and it's like nope so uh, that's there the are, worst. and then i realized there are like fuzzy indicators where like there's these big circles and stuff but any hints you've got on the way from other people don't log. So okay. you only get the main quest point. There is no like logging information of all. Oh, So-and-so said you might be able to find this person by this blah, blah, blah. Right. There's none right. of that. See, like, I'm, oh. I'm always, I'm always one of those people that's like a lot of games have too much like map marker. Yeah. Hey, this exactly. is your next thing. Go here and then follow the arrow there. And then once you get there, we'll make you a nice new arrow to follow. And then, and sometimes I'm thinking like, oh, I don't want that. Like, I don't need my hand held through this game. I kind of right. like to figure stuff out for myself, you know, let me mm -hmm. have, let me have the, the, the map as it is. Don't put a bunch of markers all over my screen. I don't need a giant HUD. I, I agree yeah, with like, that. If you, if you don't play a game in a while, you're just, you're screwed because you have no reference point. You don't remember what you're doing, what you've done already, what you haven't done yet. You see, it's, I go back to tricky. I go back to Boulder's Gate on a great way of doing that. They had a journal aspect of that game. And when you talk to people and they said things of importance or things that you might want to take note of, it got logged in this journal. There was no shit on the map telling you where to go, but if you took your time and didn't remember what you were doing, you could read through your journal and it would kind of give you the high level of what people said when you were talking to them. Mm. There was a game that was really cool. Uh, I forgot what it was, um, <clears throat> but they had this thing that was that you wouldn't get a lot of information. I think it had its own little map markers and all that same thing, but it had information on the loading screen of everything that's happened so far, like a mm -hmm. quick little summary of like what like what like you're at during the quest line. And I thought that was really, really cool. I like things like that, especially when I boot it up. Like, you know, I'm loading in for the first time in a week or so. And the, it, it might have been, I want to say it was, uh, crap. What was that one that Eric really liked with the robot dinosaurs? <laughs> uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. <laughs> Thank you. It's Horizon Zero Dawn. I think, I think did it. 
I think they had that loading that loading screen where it like gave you a quick recap of the quest you're on and what what you mm. found out recently. I think that was right. That's a lot better than the Skyrim loading screen, which was just a small tidbit of useless information. Hey, did you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's good for like a multiplayer game, but not a. Yeah. Uh... Ah, yeah, that's. I I actually like the Skyrim style because they can actually give you useful stuff about um, control that you might not have found in the game yet. Mm. Like, hey, you can do this to help avoid that. And nine times out of ten, it is stupid shit. But yeah. it can be really useful. Hmm. So, is there anything else you were playing there, Josh? No, we're talking about you and my dude. Ah, okay. What were you playing? Um, well, <laughs> sorry, I just noticed that. Um, there was one other thing <laughs> that I really did a lot of. Well, I shouldn't say a lot of. Um, just today, I played a good bit of. Um, I that? picked up. They are billions. Damn. They so are billions. 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 Billion billions. Dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching some streams of that, uh, but I still don't know what it's about. <laughs> Explain I only, it. I only saw it briefly. It looked like RTS meets zombie survival or something. Were those yeah, zombies? A, winner. Yeah, what are those? Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Adam's a winner. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, That's so what do I win? It's in the title. Um, you win me <laughs> describing what you just said. Awesome. Um, do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so devoid. I want to hear Josh describe it. Yeah, let me describe it. Okay, describe I'm it. I'm just kidding. I don't know. I got nothing. They're okay. billions. That's what so, I heard. <laughs> billions, as the background indicates. But um, so what it is, it's an RTS. And, well, it's kind of an RTS, only you're not playing against other armies and stuff. You are put into a scenario where, hey, you choose the map, you choose how many days you want to survive, and you choose the density. And the density is how many zombies are on this map. Mm. So what happens is um, you're building a base and you have to defend it against these hordes of zombies. And what happens is, you know, every once in a while, one or two will trickle into your base, but all of a sudden you'll see this, the zombies are approaching, they are gathering up, and then they'll tell you a direction. And then all of a sudden, this huge wave of zombies just comes at you. And mm. they'll damage your shit, and then you'll fight them off, and then you'll win. And then the next mm. time, an even bigger wave comes. And these waves get bigger and bigger and bigger as the game goes. So the very first time I'm playing this, I'm thinking, okay, uh, like you normally should, let's play exactly how the game sets you up, the default settings. Mm. Wow, mm. this game is fucking hard. Um, so before I could even get walls really set up to defend my base, I was getting bombarded. Um, they have this weird mechanic. I don't want to say weird. It's, it's an interesting mechanic. You need workers to do everything. And it's not Warcraft, Starcraft workers thing where you build them and they do stuff. You have to build a house and this house will give you two workers. And then you have to build another house and that'll give you two workers. So every mm -hmm. two workers takes up physical location in your base. So you oh, can't cool. just spam up all these workers. You actually have to build houses for all these workers. That's so cool. So you have to balance when you initially try to wall up your city. How much am I doing for upgrades? How much am I doing for workers? You have to, let's say you want more workers. All of a sudden you find out, oh shit, I'm not producing enough food. You actually have to produce something to get food. Oh, shit, I don't have enough wood to build this. Okay, so you have to build some wood. Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck, I don't have enough energy to produce wood. Then you have to build a wood thing. So, or an energy producer. And there's oh, this wow. huge balance of things. And it's just not necessarily, it's resource management as well as major space management. Mm -hmm. And then to produce military units, it actually takes a worker and converts them. And let's say you oh, have a okay. house, so you have two workers. You build a military person. You now only have one worker for that house. You don't get a second worker back until that unit dies. At least I believe that's cool. how it works. I haven't really got too far into that. Hmm. So there was a game called uh, called Cultures that had that same concept, where you actually had to breed a, you had to make a person. Person would you'd have to teach them how to do something, and they'd learn how to do that thing, and then they are that thing. So yeah. there was this whole like growth thing that you had to ex yeah no, no I, that makes sense that's crazy 
Yes, it's really interesting. And all the buildings are like that too. So if I build an energy, so think of um, StarCraft, the Protoss. Okay. How you have to have the si or the pylons to expand your base. Mm -hmm. There's this similar concept where you have to have an energy at the area you're trying to build. And then you build these little Tesla towers, which are essentially pylons to let you expand mm -hmm. your base. Oh, okay. cool. Um, so let's say you want to build this pylon. It takes one worker. You put that pylon down, you forever lose that worker. So it's oh, workers crazy. are essentially currency. I think it's the best way to view it. Hmm. It's just okay. another resource. And once it's used, it's gone. So it's, it's when that, super when fun. That person's, when that person's gone in that scenario, do, do you, um, can you build another one? <laughs> and then that house like is empty for one more? Or is that no. like, does that worker die or you? No, that worker that is, e? it's now a, a worker pylon. in that pylon, essentially. The way I'm viewing it is that worker is now oh, permanently crazy. stationed there. there. And he's not allowed to go home ever. Yes. So <laughs> that, that whole your life now, worker B. Now the nice thing is, as you advance up the tech tree, you can upgrade houses in place to where they're from two workers to four workers. So you can do that kind of oh, stuff okay. at least. Okay. There are Little some. Condos. Yeah. <laughs> it's like oh, a zombie apocalypse in a wood house. Oh, it's a condominium now. Fuck yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, it's it's super hard. If you enjoy RTSs and you enjoy kind of horde tower defense games. I think this is a really good mix. Note, this is early access, um, mm -hmm. super well polished. There's only one bug I've noticed so far. You make these defensive towers next to your walls and you can shoot people to come out your walls. I have people in these towers and they're killing all these hordes and there's just one guy left and he's off to this catacornered angle and the guys in the tower can't see him somehow and he's destroying this wall. I take someone out of the tower, put him behind the tower, and all of a sudden he can see him now and shoots oh. through the tower to shoot him. <laughs> so there's this nice. weird uh, physics. Yeah, line of, there's a weird line of sight bug with that. But other than that, this game for an early access game is really, really good. There's a reason it's got so much popularity on Twitch right now. It's a fun game. Mm -hmm. um, if you play on normal, it's fast paced. I died like three times on normal, so I went down to easy just so I can learn some of the mechanics. Mm. But on normal, it's a very fast-paced game. Um, if you suck, it'll be done in like five, ten minutes. Um, the only thing I can see them doing to enhance this is they're going to have to improve the UI. Um, there's no good way to say, I'm done with this game. The way it works is when you start a new game, it automatically creates a save. Mm -hmm. And when you leave that game, it saves it and exits you to menu. And then mm, you okay. just have to actually delete that game. There's no way to gotcha. play a game without saving, exit without saving, which is a good safeguard, but it just feels a little, I'm not used to it, I guess I should say. Right. So, so what is end game then? Like um, what, do the hordes just keep getting bigger until you die or is there a time there, limit or what, like yeah. a win? I don't know if there's a win, win condition. <laughs> Technically, the, the standard mode is last 100 days. Everything is ticked by hours. And after every eight hours, you get your income of whatever gold you're producing, wood producing, food, blah, blah, blah. So every three ticks is a day. You're supposed to live 100 days in the default mode. Now, I don't know if that means 100 days, ding, 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 you made it, we're done. Or if it's just congratulations, you won. Now let's see how long you last. I don't know which one of those happened because I suck too much to get to that point. But... That okay. is kind of how it works. They score it though. And that's the fun thing. You can use this as a competitive game where the harder your difficulty, the higher your score multiplier. So you get rewarded with high scores by trying higher, harder stuff. Right. Okay. It sounds pretty cool. It looks pretty cool. It looked really intense. So <laughs> I'm not a big RTS guy, so I don't know if this one's for me, but I do like tower defense. So maybe this is for me. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, f it, picture it more as a um, RTS because there's a lot of space management kind of stuff, but it does have a right. little bit of like, when I said tower defense, I was meaning tower defense in the sense of horde mode, like, right? where you're uh, still actively it, fighting, yeah. but it's strategically placing things for it. But yeah, so that game is going to be good. It will probably be a time sink to me. Um, how much was it? Uh, 15 bucks, I want to say. 15 or 25, nice. no, 25, 25, 25. Yeah. Um, bad value. 
I can say that I feel pretty good about that for 25. Hmm. But yeah, that'll be a big time sink to me. Just kind of like um, the other game I was playing this week, Civ Five. Um, yeah, I got. <laughs> I've been sucked back into that, and I've dropped probably ten hours this week, all in one game. So, Damn, yep. I've I've never played Civilization. Really? But the only thing I've ever heard about Civilization, I mean, I know what it is, but the the thing I hear more than anything else is that game is a time sink. Yeah. Yes, it just, is. Just one more turn. Oh no, it's been 400 hours and I haven't slept yet. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a hell of a time sink. Absolutely. But really, other than that, that's pretty much all. Just the norm Rocket League started you on the bus. Good stuff. <laughs> um, right on. So, really, that's pretty much all we've been playing. We got some news, though. We have some fun news. That news. 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 Uh, first, news. Uh, first quick hits a headline. Uh, Valve. There's been some uh, political stuff happening in the Philippines. So Valve pulled the major for Dota out of the Philippines something like 10 days before the event was supposed to happen. Ooh. It's crazy. What about so, the ticket holders? Yeah. I, I don't know everything that they're doing. Things. They're trying to stand up a uh, another or the event in another place, I think I way understood it but yeah i thought it was crazy that they pulled it that close to the date mm. yeah it's nuts they can't reimburse us like like adam was saying plane tickets that's a crazy yeah. one i didn't even think about that <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah valve will make good on the actual ticket tickets but the plane tickets yeah that's i wonder because valve's bankrolling probably screwed but yeah. let's be honest probably most people flying to that are the content or the actual contenders and I can see Valve reimbursing the contenders. I would hope so. Yeah. Because there's not going to be well, I mean, too many we'll of them. see. A <laughs> um, couple more little headlines. Uh, Mad Cats, a few weeks ago, we reported that they, de- actually probably months, they declared bankruptcy. Um, looked like it was going to be the end of them. But they had a reconsolidation, and they are back at it. They are making a Thanks. new line of products that is supposed to be announced soon. Um, well, hey. I shouldn't say announced, but revealed soon. So nice. Mad Cats is back, fellas. Let's That's get great. some second rate PC hardware. I just yeah. need something for the player too that shows up from controller my house hardware. Yeah, let's get those cheap ass controllers. Here's your you shit ass controller. Idiot. Shit, man, you ain't getting a good one. <laughs> Take this piece of shit. So um other quick headlines. Enter the Gungeon. Uh, the developers are really happy. It's released on Switch and they are selling really well. They've nice. S- uh, first week, 75,000 copies of it sold on the Switch. That, News that flash, game, that game you, is perfect for the Switch. Except for its difficulty. Well, what I mean, mean... What are you trying to it's, say? It's hard, but... <laughs> that the, game the is game, brutal. Yeah, but the game itself... I mean, that's that's just such a perfect Switch game. It is. I'm so glad they ported that. And Newsflash, if you release a good game on the Switch, it's going to sell really well. Really, really well. Because yeah. <laughs> the Switch has set the new record. Over a 10 month period, it is the fastest selling console in the United States ever. Faster Crazy. than the 360, Damn. the Xbox One, the PS4, all of them. That's this thing insane. is crazy. The adoption That's... rate is insane on some of their high profile games, too, like Zelda's over 50, Mario's mm. over 50 super high it's doing well well i mean what the first uh was it the first week or couple released that more people owned breath of the wild than owned switch consoles oh wait yeah. what yeah um <laughs> yeah. for like the first a few point. weeks yeah first few weeks yes. uh there's been more copies of the game sold than there were versions of switch or actual switch is sold in the wild in, that's insane it's in just, the wild yeah in the wild this is insane the, was it the breath of the wild yeah the breath, yeah. The, breadth, the breadth of the wild breadth. the breadth <laughs> no. um it's breadth. it's it's a really good console i mean three of us here have it so i mean it's True. it's really really well it's only a matter of time until we talk adam into it uh, i don't know no yeah. <laughs> i doubt it it's just not practical wouldn't be worth the the money for me i can see that yeah because i wouldn't i I wouldn't have one if uh if uh, some awesome people didn't give it (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, and then other quick news, um, Paladins, actually this may not be too quick, is announcing a Battle Royale mode. Paladins is kind of like a, um, I don't want to say clone of, but very, very similar to Overwatch. And mm -hmm. they're making a Battle Royale mode. So it's going to be called Paladins Battlegrounds. So, holy <laughs> shit that is obvious and not not only the name did you see the font that they used for the word battlegrounds <laughs> paladins yeah, but, the, the no, logo was pretty suspiciously <laughs> close <laughs> and i haven't played paladins but i heard it is like comically a clone of overwatch <laughs> I'd be interested to see if um, how that's going to work out. It's actually kind of interesting in a way. Like if you really like take all the the copy paste stuff out of it, right? Mm -hmm. um, like something like just picturing Overwatch as a battlegrounds game, like the class system, that's got to be yeah. broken, right? Like that's got to be pretty. <laughs> like if they have healers yeah. in battlegrounds, like that also sounds kind of crazy and broken, right? M and maybe a lot it's of those something... games and classes like thrive off of dying and being able to respawn. It just mm -hmm. sounds crazy. I mean, I don't care. <laughs> I I'll, I like battle uh, battlegrounds uh, type games. Like I love, uh, I love the having Fortnite, i love having PUBG. uh this one is actually another unique spin on it but you know i'm definitely gonna get sick of it <laughs> i'm definitely gonna get sick of it at some point um like two or three more and i think i'm done with the with this whole uh with this whole battle battle royale <laughs> game <laughs> i mean i do want to see um i do want to see uh dying lights battle battle royale mode come out because that'll be fun i mean battle royale is just a cool game mode yeah, and really, the just a uh, one hundred players fighting to the death till one person is standing. That pr that pretty much works with most multiplayer online games. Yeah, I wonder how they have an item combat. Like, right. it's it's it doesn't have to have like a loot system or anything like that. Any any first person shooter, you can drop a hundred people in on a map, and the last person standing wins. I mean, that would be really a cool interesting. Format. With no ammo pickup would be really interesting. Oh, and you That's... have to be really uh, conservative with your shots. No, there, no, not even. There's, just, there's no infinite. ammo. You just have infinite ammo. Oh, just... I took that the other way. Yeah, no, like not. It's not a strategic thing at that point. Like it, it would be interesting in a battle royale situation because it's really just like you versus the other people. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I, I think the maps would have to be smaller for that because yeah, I think you're right. There's nothing to do other than kill players. Yeah, I agree. There's no, there's no, there's nothing you have to get. There's, I mean, it's just kill. Maybe like a health everybody. pickup thing, maybe like an <laughs> maybe, Uber charge yeah. pickup thing. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's just seems the battle rail is just, I don't know. <laughs> Everywhere. Well, what's? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think Dark Soul has a has the point. I don't usually call this out, but whole point of battle royale is that you land uh, with nothing at all, no advantage, anything. You, you rely on luck. Paladins is hero based, so it's not going to be. An even playground doesn't well, make sense. I maybe agree. it's hero based to the fact or to the point where you get different hero abilities based on what you find. Like the abilities, like aren't you show tied up as hero. like a like a, a crippled old man when you land, and then you can yeah. like, and then you like get into like I don't know, like a little. Like, oh, there's campaign. a Reinhardt box. Bam, and now I'm Reinhardt. Or, well, right, no, like exactly. Dota. Dota has a ability draft mode where you pick your hero and then you draft the abilities. To where the oh, abilities yes, aren't tied to a hero. I don't. I don't. I just don't know dick about paladins. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know I how more about the game. I could. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean let's I just assume of... Overwatch. Let's just assume that's basically what I'm Overwatch doing at this Battle point. Royale. And it doesn't. Like, I think it'll be pretty broken. Like especially. How does it work with support characters and stuff? Right. Exactly. Heavy okay. support characters, fast characters, slow characters, like a sniper character, like. Sniper characters are super overpowered in in those sort of games. Like that's why they can find like the maps. The maps are really confined. So if you just had like a laser beam sniper rifle character in a big open field, that's it's just gonna crush, and the whole game's just gonna be snipers. <laughs> you know, like yeah. I don't, I don't know. It's really interesting. So we'll see about that. But I'm just uh, amazed at how quick this trend's picking up. Because I mean, it happened yeah. with the MOBA, and then it happened with the hero based shit. And now it's happening I mean, with Battle Royale. Yeah. I mean, I'm so, not totally surprised at all. There's 
hundreds of thousands of people watching these are the top selling game the top watch game like mm -hmm. like it's i'm surprised i didn't pick it up faster i mean this it's just there's just so yeah. much money to be had that there's no reason not to dunk all of your resources immediately into a battle royale mode calling right. it now halo 6 will have one of these <laughs> <laughs> halo would be an okay series for that i think yeah i battle. think so so uh paladin so i guess i didn't think if if you're playing in a squad mode you could kind of like that would be coordinate sweet. with your team and which i'm sure that's probably focused on more squad than like solo play but yeah because coordinate might... with your team make like a little team roster of a you know whatever heroes work together well and then yeah can... that'd be awesome that would actually be really cool but i don't know we'll see we'll see what we'll see what they do <laughs> we will yeah. see in fact can we can we get like a halo 2 multiplayer battle royale <laughs> halo 2 I want halo 3 Halo I 3, there we go. I don't know. I played more 2 than 3, but it, it was so long ago. <laughs> I can't say which one was better. 3 was probably my favorite multiplayer, but either way. Um, quick call out for this, and Josh, I know, will be hella excited. Uh, oh, the yeah. final Monster Hunter World beta will be opening up January 18th through the 22nd, only for the PS4, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get on this. I think this the last one I didn't go on to... I don't know why I didn't. I guess I'm just kind of anticipating it, but I think I'm going to get on for this one. I, and I'll, I'll tell you what I think once I get onto that. That's going to be amazing. I'm super excited. Yeah, I'm really excited for Monster Hunter. Um, I tried to get in Generations. I didn't get in too much, but I really did with Try. And I'm really pumped for this. I just don't know what I want to do because the PS4 releases this, what, the end of this month? Or the very beginning yeah, of next? something like that. But Either the way, computer it, doesn't have a release date yet that I saw. So, I mean, you're talking to one of those six, possibly six month delays if you wait for PC. Yeah, and that is what it is. Um, I don't know if I'll jump on it or wait until PC. Maybe if uh, if I have some people out there that are playing uh, with me, I might do it. But I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. We'll definitely we'll see. have to get some feelers out there because I'm in the same boat where I can go PS4, but I don't know if the we'll have community members in there or not yeah as long as they can get an alpha cap <laughs> but either way you guys got a ps4 i would definitely check that out um some other early access kind of news uh star citizen for the second straight year doubled the funding of all other games on kickstarter this game Jesus. is just crowdfunding a um, god i mean i don't know how else to say it this game is phenomenal <laughs> when it comes to getting money from people without actually that, producing a game yeah. <laughs> that's true i don't it, so it's not even i don't know how far along are they i have no idea there's playable stuff there there is okay um they actually split to make a second game off of it which is where they started getting sued by crytek but okay. um it's been Backed since 2012, and a game is still yet to come out. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, there is a playable. Say. There's a playable early access kind of thing. Yes. Yeah, they kept putting out stuff. They put out like a. Good. They put out an initial like um like spaceship piloting thing. They had like some dog fighty stuff that they put out later on, and then mm -hmm. I don't know what I don't I don't know if they have like a full release of multiplayer content out yet. I don't know much about that part. I'm just kind of mm -hmm. waiting. Yeah, I have a friend that's really big Playable into is a it. strong word, yeah. That is a good point. Playable is a very strong word. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the very it's, first it's apparently release wasn't. So, appa apparently it's so heavy on your machine that you need like a NASA supercomputer in order to mm. uh, run without any, with any incident. But um, I'd like to get in it. I actually haven't even looked at it since then. I, I kind of like, you know, not paying attention to it on purpose because i i want to play it and enjoy it when it comes out but i just at this point i kind of forgot to, <laughs> to pay attention yeah. to it so now i just know not to look at it so we'll see hmm. i kind of chalk it up to being a no man's sky only without the um fake pub i guess you can say i just mm -hmm. don't think they're going to be able to <laughs> fulfill everything they're promising it's yeah. too yeah, but that's it's like too ambitious to do that it's the Kickstarter scope. way, though, right? Like, I've been waiting on a, a bunch of different games that came out. Like, there was like a game called BMX the Game, which was supposed to be like skate, but for like bikes. And 
and I, I like, I bought into that like all in. I, I yeah. got like whatever the highest one that didn't cost three hundred dollars one, <laughs> and, like a little package, and then I got like a playable DLC for them. Oh, this is gonna be great! It's gonna be so good. And I, they haven't even updated their website. Um, <laughs> as far as, <laughs> and then I was playing this game called Session, which is really cool, and it's supposed to be like a skate clone. But we'll see how that goes. It's just kind of like, yeah. it's all sort of just disappointment in a can. Like, <laughs> like I don't think I've ever like backed anything on Kickstarter that I've been like, all oh, right, that was amazing. Minus like yeah, probably exploding funny. kittens or like some of the board game stuff, but yeah. like video games <laughs> on Kickstarter, it's just like yeah. it's. Yeah, it's but just the, not a lot of early access games that come out full release that meet all of the expectation and hype. Because that's yeah. like the point of Kickstarter, People, right? You're supposed to generate yeah. like a shitload of hype, and then like you'll never live up to that hype. Especially yeah. because so many developers like have these big ideas for games, not really realizing how much time it takes. Yeah, I mean, and it's they're like just just having too big of a scope, and then you're never gonna be able to fulfill that. Well, it, to be honest, like it kind of comes like when you when you're independent it comes when you've never been in a big studio before it comes from when like you know even just doing like cosmonaut for instance you know there's there's ideas everyone every single person in the group has an idea since the start and they keep adding to it and adding to it and then it expands into something that you can't keep track of it's like so it's it's just going to happen when you have people with inexperience you know yeah, as far but... as like production management is concerned this mm -hmm. isn't an experience, though. This is the lead guy from Wing Commander. That's why everyone's it's, so hyped, is because this is supposed to be like the spiritual successor doing everything added on to what Wing Commander was. No, I get it. Yeah. And the but, fact that I they've mean, raised he also has a billion. He, yeah, he has like a billion dollars now, too. So, I mean. <laughs> they've raised $175 million since it was initially kickstarted. Yeah, so I mean, I'm sure that whole I, I he's never had that much money ever to support a, a game that he's playing. Like he's never had that budget. So like the we could totally do that is probably on the table way more often than we. Can <laughs> yeah, that. it's like it's like we have a hundred million dollars. We could literally do anything, and we're going to do it. <laughs> yeah, and then a year down that, the road, money's running slim. Yeah, game isn't done. Oh no, what are we gonna do? Yeah, exactly. Another Kickstarter campaign. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> More money. Another thirty Pro million dollars this year. Dark Soul brings up a good point. Do you have to pay taxes on Kickstarter? I would think so. Yeah, honestly, I mean, with that kind income, of money, right? income. If you don't take that through an LLC, you'll probably have to claim that as a capital gain and lose a fuck ton. But either way, mm, yeah. that that gets into weird territory where none of us, I think, are fully experienced. So. Nope. Because I don't know. Unless Josh, have you ever, you know, brought in $175 million? Can you tell yeah, us about yeah. the tax implications? I, I usually do that. I usually do that. Like double oh. that a weekend. Yeah. Oh, nice. It's, but, you not know, I just, flip, I just flipped that over into like another bank account that we're not going to talk about anyway. Side on. says not if it's a nonprofit. <laughs> but you have to break <laughs> even side. You can't just say like I'm a nonprofit and then take anything without taxable without taxing it. You have to break even. Uh, you have to zero out everything. Yeah, it's a, it's a nonprofit, but the head, <laughs> the guy leading the game design is that be able to be paid, and his salary is 174 million. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The other one million is for overhead. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's for the toilets. I don't know. <laughs> the bidets at that at that cost that's fucking bidets. Every night. I want to see their office. I wonder if their office is just absolutely insane. I've I, I've never even googled <laughs> into this. They don't even have a bank account. They just stack the cash on the desks. And that is the <laughs> it desk. is the desk. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, okay, and then there's there's one more uh, news article here. I just like, ow bit my tongue. Sorry. Fuck that hurt. Oh, yeah, um, sure. Steam. <laughs> Sorry. Fuck that hurt. Um, Steam, <laughs> top grossing games of 2017 came out. Um, I just have to call this out as I normally do. GTA 5, how the yeah. fuck is that still one of the top selling games? It was I'm, one of their best years this year, apparently. I've apparently. never, since probably the first couple of times we covered this kind of thing, since then, I am never surprised to see Grand Theft Auto 5 on these lists. 
Yeah, I in fact, I would be more surprised the t- the the one time that's not like the last time it's on one of these lists, and then another one comes out and it's not on it. I'm going to be surprised, even if yeah. it's like twenty years later. The thing that gets <laughs> me is this list: the platinums is a mix. Half of these games are not new, so you have yeah. GTA mm-hmm. Five, mm-hmm. you have Ark, Rainbow Six mm-hmm. Siege, um, Witcher Three, Dota Two. H1Z, I'm Rocket League. I mean, Counter you have Strike. one thing. Wait, why is Counter Strike on there? It doesn't make any sense. Marketplace sales. Uh, like oh, Dota yeah. 2 is a free game and it is in their platinum sellers due to all of the monetization that happens yeah. on the side. I'm surprised H1Z1 is on there. I actually am. Isn't H1Z1 like heavily dying since Battlegrounds came out? Yeah, but keep in I, mind, I like, even, when, did, when did Fortnite Battlegrounds release? Yeah. I mean, I've even heard, I even heard that when H1Z1 had that free weekend recently, that it wasn't like helping them that much. So that came out September 2017, Fortnite Battle Royale. September 26, uh, 2017. So, I mean, they, before that, I mean, H1Z1 was huge. Well, right? still, still then, running against PUBG though. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, at the same time, H one is the was the only game like that. It was supposed to be faster paced, bubblier, fun. Uh, PUBG people played both actively. Like a lot of the guys that there was big tournaments for H one Z one. There's huge tournaments that happened um, earlier in the year. Uh, so I mean, I'm not super surprised. They probably, you know, they uh, tanked pretty hard recently. <laughs> a couple people in chat have mentioned that h1z1 is still really popular in china i can see that yeah and a, a lot of the china servers are, are opening up in um for the these games only recently for like mm-hmm. PUBG and uh fortnite the china servers are just coming out yeah well it's because they have to remake the game for to be you know representative of the positive socialist <laughs> values it's true it's true Positive social community values and battle royale fight to the death game. <laughs> you know, well, it was, uh, battle royale was actually Japan. Sorry, I was getting to say I'm like that's where it came from, but no. Because for those who don't know, battle royale refers to the uh, Japanese movie where all those school kids are pretty much dropped off and left to fight to the death. I want to watch that movie. I haven't seen it still. It's, I bet it's really good. It's good. I enjoy it. It's older, but I enjoy it. But anyway, I think that's honestly all we got for you guys this week. Um, quick notes, postcast game. Sorry, side. Sorry, Tim. Uh, golf with your friends. Um, <laughs> we will try to get information out much earlier this time around for next week's postcast. But this week will be golf with your friends. Um, and with yeah. that, uh, just quick rundown um you can look at any of our static content on our youtube page go over check it out uh you can tweet at us like all the postcast game suggestions that you have day of cast tweet at 72 pc podcast <laughs> let us know about them and we can make shit happen um and if you are on youtube come to our twitch uh slash 72 piece or pin connector and uh watch us live saturday nights at 9 p.m eastern um and with that i th- think that's about all we got for you um call outs uh, yes i was gonna say adam do you have some call outs yeah rune killer 13 thanks for subscribing yeah that's a rad dude right there subscribe <laughs> uh, like that. dobby thank you more for subscribing <laughs> yes and, uh, six six months in a row thanks that's awesome so that's, uh, that's a lot of months hello sub that's yeah hella sub hella sub what, what kind of sub is he oh hella Hell, someone needs to get in there and do the sub breaker anyway <laughs> with that i think that's all we got for you guys this week uh stay tuned we'll be popping the stream back up in a few minutes with some golf with your friends so till next week game on game on yep see ya <laughs>